voice of a consecrated soul. with religious women. Greetings of the day. This is your host, Ms. Privy D'Souza, extending a warm and a hearty welcome to all the viewers who are watching this video right now. Today we have with us Sister Marit B.S. from the Bethany Congregation, Mangalore, on board with us. She is an active and an enthusiastic persona. She has pursued her doctoral studies in theology and is currently a general counsellor and coordinator of the formation in the congregation. Sister, we are elated to have you on board with us today. I extend a warm and hearty welcome to you, dear sister. I hope you are all comfortable and all set to rock this interview. Are you ready? Very much. Very much. <laughs> Alright, so without wasting much time, let me begin with the first question. Well, my first question is, could you please share with us your journey in becoming a religious nun and what inspired you to pursue this vocation? Well, my story begins in class 3. The Ursuline sister who was teaching catechism for the First Holy Communion, she used to ask her quite often, how many of you would like to be a sister? Invariably, without any hesitation, my hand would be up and say, Sister, I want to become. And my response continued the same way year after year. So from class 3 to class 10, my response never got changed. It remained the same. I want to be a sister. Wow, I still remember when I was in the fourth grade uh, in my catechism class, my sister asked me the same question. And I still remember, you know, most of my friends raised their hands saying that, Sister, I want to become a sister in the future. And today, when I asked them the same question, like, you know, didn't you want to become a sister back then? They were like, no, 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 I, I gave up. And I must say that I personally respect you. I And I must say that, you know, you have a good dedication and determination towards your goal and you have achieved your goal you know in becoming a religious nun so congratulations to you on that <laughs> my next question to you is um, there are many other congregations out there but why did you choose Bethany congregation in particular out of all the other congregations when I was in class 5 I was part of the serenity of Mary even my elder sister was there during these meetings, some sisters of different congregations would come and they would share about their mission, their founder, where they are. Somehow I was getting interested into what they were saying, but still more about their dress. I was getting fascinated with the type of dress that they were wearing. But of course, I didn't understand much of what they were saying. On the same, on the other side, we had many family members in the Bethany congregation. My own aunt, cousins, my daddy's cousins. When I completed my SSLC, my parents asked me, what are your plans? Because I got distinction in my SSLC, so they must have thought I'm changing my plans. So asked me, what are your next plans? I said, my desire is still to be a sister. I said, well, they asked me where. I said, still I don't know. Meanwhile, they came to know that there was a vocation camp organized by the Bethany sisters in Rosa Mystica Gurpu and asked me whether I was interested to participate. I said, most willingly. And my father accompanied me, left me there. The first day was really awful. I found it tough because every place was strange for me, new for me. Because I never lived outside my family or in the hostel, boarding, nowhere. That was for the first time I was out of the house without my family members. But given to my nature, the following day onwards, I was comfortable. I made friendship with quite many of them. So during this meeting, many sisters spoke of what 
Bethany meant Bethany of the Gospel, where we have Jesus, Mary, Martha. Jesus is the center of the Bethany family. Then we have Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening, praying. We have Martha serving. Something happened in my heart within. I think here is where the Lord is calling. And still further when I heard their mission, they said, we are to serve the poor. We are here to go into villages. We are here to educate the girls. Something more resonated within me. And when I spoke of the founder, RFC Mascarenhas, today he is the servant of God, I said he was a man who had a vision, who went to the villages and his dream was the empowerment of girls. I said, Lord, perhaps you are calling me here. And at the end of the vocation camp, the mother children came to meet us, address us, the girls. So at the end of it, she said, if anyone is interested to join Bethany and want to come and meet her, she would be available. I took the first chance. Immediately, I rushed to meet her and said, Mother, I want to be a Bethany sister. She was so loving. She simply hugged me and embraced me and said, what's welcome? So I joined and then I made my first vows, made my final vows and she was the one who received my vows. And she used to tell me always, I still remember you, that enthusiastic girl, age of 16, coming and saying, sister, mother, I want to be a Bethany sister. That's how I'm in Bethany. Wow, it's simply wonderful to listen to all the factors that attracted you to the Bethany congregation. So the world outside was attractive when you joined the congregation and I'm pretty sure that most of your friends must have discouraged you on your decision of becoming a religious nun. So my question is how did you overcome all these odds and obstacles and stood on your decision in becoming a religious? Yes, my friends knew that my desire was to be a sister. But they thought I would change my mind after the results that I got in SSLC. So they start telling me, you're making a foolish choice. It's a tough life. You have to adjust with so many. And there will be frequent transfers from place to place, which means cutting off from your family and your siblings. Well, none of their reasons convinced me, nor disturbed me. My passion to be to be a sister continued, persisted, and I left home. So I've heard that you are a very talented person and God has blessed you with numerous talents and skills like intelligence and leadership. So do you ever feel like you could have made better use of your talents and skills to earn well with a better position in the society? I never felt so. I always consider but these talents, intelligence, or leadership skills that I have are God gives to me. I'm not the master of any of them. I have nothing to boast about except God's goodness towards me. If at all I have done anything in the congregation, it's God's grace followed me. And whenever I undertook, there were a lot of friends within the congregation, outside the congregation, supporting me, encouraging me in moments of difficulties. I felt that we need leaders, talented persons, intelligent persons, not only outside in the world, but also in religious life. I always thought of what more could I do for Bethany? What more can I do to the society through Bethany? Therefore, being inside, I felt comfortable to do the best with the God-given gifts to me. Well, I must say that your firm belief that your talents like intelligence and leadership skills can be best utilized in serving the God, the Almighty, as well as the humanity is commendable. Well, my next question is, in religious life, you have to um, face people from different cultures. So, don't you feel difficult in adjusting to people from different cultures and backgrounds? 
Yes, community life plays a very important role in religious life. Adjusting with persons of different cultures, temperaments, is a big challenge. But while we go through this process, what I learn is patience, art of adjustment, learning the richness of their culture. Well, sometimes the idiosyncrasies of others irritate us. But what I feel is, I am getting shaped from within when I interact with the others. On one side, when it is a challenge, on the other side, I have experienced a lot of joy, fun, sharing. I've learned what sacrifice means. I've learned what it means to walk the second mile. I've learned to observe the other. I have learned how richly they contribute and they become a teacher for me. So I've been also at the national level in different communities. I've also been at the international level in different communities. Learning from each other is the best way of educating myself. Wow, well, I must say that in spite of all the ups and downs, you have a positive mindset, a very optimistic mindset to look toward any situation and accepting it in a very, very positive way. Well, um, what difference do you have to say about the contribution of the religious to the world in comparison to the contribution of lay people to the world? Basically, everyone wants to be good. And all want to do good. Quite many of them giving themselves to the society, unmindful of what they get in return. That selflessness I have seen. And in fact, quite many of them are role models in this regard. As Christians, if we are to say, maybe they look at Jesus who went on doing good, and he as the hero, as the leader, the inspiration behind. But as religious, we have a mandate. We have an obligation because we are called to be with him and then to serve him. So while going out to serve, we look at Jesus again. We do not look at gains. At times it may be a frustration or a failure. That doesn't matter. We look at Jesus crucified and we move ahead. The difference that I find is when they do it alone, maybe that is their personal charism they're allowing to bloom forth. But when we do it as religious, it is the charism of the congregation that we participate in. It's a charism of the founder that we participate in. So it's a kind of, we do it as a part of the institution, whereas they are doing it as individuals. Either you do it as an individual or as a religious, you're doing the same mission. But there's a difference. There it's a personal charism. Here it is an institutional charism where we streamline our personal charism into it. Well, I must say that together we can make a difference. And together we can make this world a better place for all of us to live in peace and harmony. Thank you, sister, for joining us today. I personally want to acknowledge your strength and uh, congratulate you on all your accomplishments. Um, well, I'm pretty sure that most of the people who are watching this video right now are inspired from your vocation story. And I wish you all the very best for all your future endeavors. Thanks, Previ. And thanks for the opportunity given to me to share my vocation story. I'm sure after listening to my story, at least a few of you will come to follow Jesus. Anyway, but most welcome to Bethany. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. This is your host, Ms. Privy Souza, signing off.